knots and to learn more about it. And so today we'll be learning more about knot tying. And our presenter this morning is Mr. Dylan Basil. I assuming that those of you from the West CSA Church may know him. And um, one of the things that he has been involved in Pathfindering for a number of years. So he's no stranger to some of you, or maybe the newer ones who are in the lower classes. And he has also worked as a fire officer for eight years where he learned a lot about knots and the rope work. So he's well-versed and he will be our facilitator for this morning's masterclass session. So before he comes up, I'll just like us to repeat our Pathfinder pledge. If possible, you could just put on your camera so that we could see our pledge together. And then afterwards, we'll invite Mr. Dylan Basil to go ahead with our session this morning. All right, let me say good morning to all of our counselors, directors, pathfinders all over Dominica. All right, so before we begin, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity where we can learn about knots and ropes as pathfinders. Dear Father, we know that this is very essential for us in our development as pathfinders. So I pray, dear God, for each and every pathfinder upon this Zoom here this morning, dear God, that even as they learn, you know, to tie the knots, that they may, you know, apply it into their pathfinder in life so that they may be successful pathfinders. You know, good first aiders, good rescuers, good tent makers, good camping pathfinders for you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So pathfinder knots. We're going to learn about ropes and knots this morning. All right. Now, as you would know, one of the most essential um, equipments or items that a pathfinder needs in pathfindering is the rope, right? You will agree that we need ropes, all right? So in pathfindering, ropes have a wide range of uses. So we're gonna look at some of the uses of ropes in pathfinder, all right? So we have um, medical purposes. You know, knots and ropes are used for medical purposes. You know, sometimes you go out and camp and somebody gets injured and you need to tie a bandage. You're gonna need your rope, all right? We also need them, um, ropes is also important when we camp in, you know, so that we can fasten our tents to the poles. You don't want the wind, you know, hurricane to take your tent and have it going all over the place. So you need your rope to tie down your tent to the pole so that it can stay. You know, you also need ropes, you know, when you're doing your lashing to make your tables, your hangers, and so on and so forth, so that you can, you know, have your food to put on your table. And everyone do camps where you, on these survival camps, where you sort of have your, use the lashings to make the tables and the hangers. Everybody, anybody ever seen that? Has anybody ever seen that? How do we make the, I've seen somebody raise their hands. I just raised them to say I have. Oh, you have, all right, all right. So uh, any of our partners have ever seen these, how we make the tables and the hangers when we go out on the survival camps? None of our pathfinders have seen that. Well, we're gonna need to do some survival camps in Dominica. You know, back in my days, in oh, you've seen it. You know, back in the glory days of pathfinder, in my days, we always used to have survival camps. You know, when we go with a jerry can of water, some foil, a potato, some flour, or ropes, and we go camping and surviving for an entire night. All right. So maybe when you get back to Dominica after the corona and everything is gonna settle down. We're gonna go and have some survival camps. We're gonna make some tables. We're gonna make some hangers and you're gonna see how we do the lashings, all right? So ropes is also important in camping, as I said. Another important use of ropes is in fishing. You know, these guys that go out to fish and as pathfinders, when you go on survival camps, you ought to fish too, all right? So fishermen need ropes because ropes is important when it comes to fishing. Another important use of rope is for rescue purposes. You know, um, you ever see these, these, these rescue personnel, like this guy right here on the screen? He's using the rope, you know, in case somebody's injured and they're down the cliff, somebody gets into a vehicle accident and they, uh, you know, go off a cliff. You need the rope so that you can tie on yourself and go down the cliff so that you can go to rescue the person, all right? When you get back onto the field, I'm gonna show you how we tie the ropes on ourselves 
and we go down the cliff, maybe have a little fun doing that, all right? So you will see how we do that when we get back out on the field, all right? So ropes are also important for rescue purposes. All right, so how, how do we care for ropes? This is very, very important because our ropes um, need to be cared for, all right? So how do we care for ropes? Firstly, we need to keep our ropes as dry as possible, all right? You need to keep your ropes as dry as possible, all right? Secondly, you, um, you do not store the ropes when they are wet, all right? You know, see, when, when the rope gets wet and it gets damp, the dampness will destroy the fibers in the rope, all right? And when you destroy the fibers, the rope weakens. And when the rope weakens, it's of no use. So you need, to, you need your rope to be of use. So you never store your rope when it is wet. Even though you are busy and you, you, know, you think you need to go somewhere fast and your rope is wet, you, know, you don't store your rope when it is wet, all right? So in case your rope is wet, and there are times when your rope will get wet because there are times when you may need to do rescue in the rain or in water, there's water rescue. All right. So, and there are times when your rope will get wet. All right. So, in case your rope gets wet, you want to want you want to allow it to get dried before you store it. All right. Now, it's important not to put your rope in direct sunlight to dry. All right. Natural drying is best, but then um, you try to avoid direct sunlight so that your rope can dry properly. So you try to, you know, hang it up somewhere in your room or inside the house or somewhere you can be, you know. It's a nice, cool air, fresh air, so that it can dry off nicely. All right, so do not store rope when they are wet. All right, so rope should be inspected, all right? So before use, you need to you know, have a little look at your rope, to see if there's any debris, see if there's any oil, see if there's any grease, see if there's any wetness in your rope, okay? So you need to inspect your rope as a pathfinder, all right? Because ropes save lives. And anything that saves lives, it must need to be cared for. And so in caring for your rope, you need to inspect your rope. Another important rule for caring for your rope is you do not walk or step on your rope. All right? You know how it's bad to step on somebody's feet? It's just as bad to step or walk on the rope. All right? Because stepping and walking on the rope will weaken the rope. Because when you step on it, you put all the debris from your shoes in the rope. And it weakens the rope. All right. So you never want to step or walk on your rope. You should avoid stepping or walking on your rope. Something else you want to avoid, you should avoid dragging the ropes. You know, sometimes you might feel a bit lazy and think, uh, I'll just drag this rope today. But no, it doesn't work. So your ropes, all right. So you try to avoid dragging your ropes. All right. Avoid dragging your ropes. All right. Something else that you want to consider is do not leave knots in ropes. All right. So when you tie your knots, all right, uh, it's good to tie knots. Yes, they're important. But when you're storing your ropes, you need to remove those knots so that you can store your rope properly. All right, and when your rope is not in use, you want to coil it to store it up. So you don't just take your rope and just send it there. Oh no, you want to coil your rope properly so that it can be stored properly so that you can prolong the life of your rope. All right, everybody's there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So we're going to look at parts of the rope now. Now, there are different parts of the rope, as you can see on the screen. Now, you're going to need to get at your ropes so that we can identify the various parts of the rope. All right? So the first part we want to look at is the standing end. All right? The standing end. As you can see here, the standing end, everybody sees on the screen, right? So you have two ends. You have the working end and you have the standing end, all right? So the, the working end, it's sometimes called the running end or the working end, you know, the names are used interchangeable. That is the more commonly preferred end to where you'll be actively involved in making the knot, all right? So generally, I'm a right-handed individual, so I tend to hold my working end in my right hand, all right? And as you can see, I have two different ends in my rope. So this end here, as you can see, it's very firm and it has a bit of a taping on the end of it, all right? So I identify this as my working end. Now this end is a bit loose, so I know that this is my standing end, all right? So I have my working end 
All right, this is what I'm going to use to basically tie the knots most of the time. All right, this is going to be actively involved in tying the knots. Working end, or sometimes called the running end, and the standing end. So you have two ends. So everybody can put up their knots like that. Let me see those ends. Working end, standing end. Working end, standing end. All right, two ends of the rope. All right. You also have the standing part. This is the part, you know, between the two ends. You have a part between the two ends. They call it the, the standing part, right? Because it's just the standing up waiting, right? So another important part of the rope is the bite and the loop, all right? So let's not mix up the bite and the loop. As you can see, that when you make a bite, there's no crossing of the, of the ends of the rope, all right? As you can see, this is a bite, all right? So as you realize, the ends of the rope are not crossed. In the case, in terms of the loop, they are crossed, all right? So this is a loop. You're gonna to need to remember this, you know, because when you're making the knots, you're going to need to know when to make a bite and when to make a loop, all right? So this is a loop. Whenever it crosses the standing part, working end crosses the standing part, you have the loop. When it goes next to it, you have a bite, all right? So bite, loop. Bite, loop. That's easy to remember, not sure? Certainly is. All right? Another important, you, another important part you have of the rope is the elbow. You know, sometimes you need it when you're making, you know, maybe the sheep shank or these other knots. An elbow, all right? It's just a twist, an extra twist in the rope. You make a loop, but it's like a loop, an extra twist, all right? Elbow, everybody get that? As you can see in the picture, right there, we have the standing end, the working end, the bite, the loop, and the elbow. All right, so you were wonderful this morning. So now we're going to get into the part where we tie some nuts. So you're going to need to get your rope. Those of you who don't have a rope, you're going to need to get your rope so that we can tie some nuts. All right, all right. So the first knot we're going to look at as the, is the overhand nut. All right. What's the first knot we're going to look at? What's the first knot we're going to look at? Overhand knot. Overhand knot. Overhand knot. Overhand knot. All right. And this is basically the first knot that we should learn as pathfinders. And one of the easiest knots to tie. All right. And I'm sure somebody knows how to tie the overhand knot. Anybody knows how to tie the overhand knot? I know how to do it. You know how to do it? Do you want to show us how to tie the overhand knot? Yes, sir. All right, you go right ahead. All right, so excellent. So your overhand knot is the first knot that you learn. And it's the basic stopper knot basically for most of your knots. All right, so you take your working end, you go around, and there you have your overhand knot. All right. Let me see this overhand knot. Good job, Sian. Good job, NG. Good job, Chelsea. Good job, Cherise. All right. So the next two knots we're going to learn is the granny knot and the square knot. The granny knot and the square knot. And I'm sure you may, may have learned these already. But there's a little trick because sometimes we can take the granny for the square and we can mix up the square for the granny. All right. So we're going to find some differences and some similarities between the square knot and the granny knot. And we're going to learn how to tie them so excellent that we won't be mixed up anymore. All right. So we're going to start with the granny knot. So remember, we have our working end and our standing end, right? All right, everyone. Let me see this working end and this standing end right next to each other. All right. So the quickest way to tie the granny knot is to first take the working end, go around like an overhand knot, standing end. Everybody have that first stage of the knot? Correct. And then as you realize, our working end switched to our standing end. All right, so we're going to use the same end. Now that our standing has switched to our working end, the right hand, 
the end that switches to our right hand, we're going to use the same end that is on our right hand and go around in another overhand knot right there. And we have the grand knot. All right. It should look something like this. All right. Very good, NG. Love it. Excellent. All right. So we're going to try this one more time. One more time. Working end. Let me see this working end. Can you identify your working end from your standing end? Do you have a marker on your working end? It's good to have a little marker, you know. I have the same marking as yours. All right. So whichever marking you use to identify your working end is good for you. All right. So working end, standing end. My standing end is a little more rough than my working end. We're going to take our working end in our right hand, the end that is in our right hand. All right, we're gonna make an overhand knot around the standing end. Okay. Everybody have that first stitch? You have that first stitch? Okay. Yes, yeah. So now that you realize your working end has switched to your left hand and your standing end has now come to your right hand. All right. You see that, right? Do you realize that? Everyone yes. realize that? Yes. Correct. So now we're going to use the end that was initially our standing end, which has now become the working end. All right. So the end that was initially our standing end. All right. We're going to use that end to make the second stage of the knot. All right. All right. Everybody get? Use that end to make the second stage of the knot. And if you do that, you should have the granny knot. Okay. Excellent, NG. I'm seeing you have it there. So we're going to get the granny and then we're going to the square. All right. So we're going to start again from our first stage. Working end. Let me see this working end. So you need to identify your working end from your standing end so that you can be better able to tie the knots. All right. Once you identify those two ends, then you are better able to work those knots. All right. So we're going to use our working end. All right. And we're going to make an overhand knot. Okay, so this is our standing end. Our working end goes over it, inside and out. All right. First stage. Everybody can put up the first stage. So when you finish the first stage, you realize that your working end has now switched to your left hand. Okay. And your standing end has now switched to your right hand. Everybody realize that? All right. So remember, I said that after we finish the first stage, our working end has now switched to our left hand and our standing end has now switched to our right hand. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the end that was our standing end, which has, now, which has now come to our right hand and make the second overhand knot. All right. So the end that we identified as the working end is going to now be the standing end. And the end that was now, that was initially, the standing end has going to become the working end. That's the end we're going to use to make the second stage of the knot. All right. So the end in my right hand, I'm going to use it to make the second stage of the knot, the second overhand knot right inside and out and pull. All right. Everybody have that? All right. So this is the old time we used to learn it back in Bad Finder. Working end, standing end. Everybody have the working end, standing one more time. All right, so we're going to learn the old time way. All right, so we used to say right, right hand, as in right hand, over left, inside out. Everybody go right over left, inside out. Okay. Right over left, inside out. And the same thing again, right over left, inside out. There you have it. So right over left, inside out right over left inside out and you have the granny nut so that was the granny nut so we're going to move on to its brother or its sister very close to it which is the square nut now the square nut is sometimes called the reef nut all right sometimes called the reef nut now it's a bit similar should be a little bit easier all right now it's very similar to the granny nut all right 
But this time, we're gonna use only the end that we identify as the working end. All right, so everybody look at the working end. Let me see those working end. Everybody can see their working end? Hmm? Yes, sir. All right. So this is the end that we're gonna use to make the two overhands. So wherever that end goes, you use it to make the overhand knot and you're only gonna end up with the square knot. Very simple, all right? All right, so same process, two overhand knots for us to get the square knot, but this time we're only gonna use this end. So wherever this end, keep an eye on this end. Wherever it goes, you use it to make the knot. All right, all right? So this is my working end. So I go around my standing end. So my working end goes to this side, but I'm still gonna work with it, all right? I'm still working with it because wherever it goes, I'm following it because I'm making the square knot. You know, like a square have all four sides equal square. So wherever that working end goes, follow it. Do not let it escape from you and make the overhand knot again with it, all right? And whenever you do that, you end up with the square knot. So it should look something like this and you can make a little, you know, Play with it right there. It should look exactly like this. Get loose and tight, loose and tight, loose and tight. All right, excellent, Aliyah has it. We're gonna try it again. All right, so we're gonna try it. I see most of you have it. You're excellent students, you're fast learners. So we're gonna try it one more time. So remember I said that for the square knot, you're gonna identify a working end and wherever this end goes, we are following it. All right, because we're going to use it to make the, the overhand to get our square knot. All right, so this is my working end. Wherever this end goes, I'm going to follow it. I'm not keeping, I'm not taking my eyes off it. I'm following it. All right, so everybody have a look at your working end. Look at it. Look at it. Learn it. Everybody seen it? Wherever it goes, make the knot with it. Do not let it run away from you. All right, so. This is my working end, right hand, right over left, inside out. Excellent. So you see my working end, is, it, it goes to this side, to the opposite side, but I'm still working with it, all right? Chama, we still have our eyes on this working end. And we're gonna go again, over, inside out. And we pull, and we have our square knot. We're gonna try the old time way, just like when you try the granny the old time way. All right, working end, right hand. Standing end, left hand, right, left. All right, so we're gonna go right over left, inside out, and then left over right, inside out. All right, everybody get that? So remember the granny was right over left, inside out, right over left, inside out. But now the square is reversed. It's right over left, inside out, and we switch left over right, inside out. Remember the switches, guys. Remember those switches. All right? So for the square knot, we switch. Instead of going right over left and right over left, we go right over left, and then we switch to left over right. So we're going to move on to another knot, the slip knot. A slip knot is a nice little fun knot, you know, we have horses here, but you know, they use the tidy horses to the to the poles. Slip knot. It's a very easy knot to make. All right. So we can. Is this a loop or a bite? A bite. A loop. A loop. It's a loop. A loop. Excellent. So this is a loop. loop. Everybody loop. should have a loop. Loop. Everybody needs to have a loop. So we have our loop. And we have the this end. So we have the loop in our right hand. We have the standing end right there. Loose. All right. So you're gonna just push this one through the loop. As soon as you have this, have the lip knot. So a good way to know that you have it is that when you pull your two ends, everybody like that, put your nose like this, let me see. When you pull your two ends, it's supposed to completely eradicate the knot, all right? So if when you pull your two ends, the knot is gone, 
Then you have it. So we're going to try one more time. Yes, we can do it. Loop. Everybody get those loops up. Loops, loops, loops. Jai, loop. Drive it, yes. So you need to identify this end in your left hand. Your loop in your right hand. The standing end down here in your left hand. Okay. All right, so we're gonna take this end and it's gonna go through the loop. All right, through the loop, through the loop, through the loop, and then you pull the other end. All right, and you have the slip now. Everybody get that? When you pull it, it's gone. Okay. So what have we learned so far? The overhand, square the granny, the slip knot. Now we're going to move on to the, the double bow. But everybody should know the double bow, right? That's just not used to tie your shoes. All right? Move on to another one. We're going to move on to the clove hitch. Now that's a very important knot. Because the clove hitch, remember, whenever we go camping, now we need to tie our poles. We need to know the clove hitch. OK, guys? We need to know the clove hitch because the clove hitch is very important when it comes to camping. When it comes to doing our lashing, to making our tables, we need to start with the clove hitch. So we need to know the clove hitch. All right, guys? So there's two ways to tie the clove hitch. We're going to learn to tie it with the rope. And then we're going to get back our poles so that we can learn to tie it on the poles. All right, guys? So the clove hitch, we're going to make two loops, all right? But they are going to be opposite to each other. So stretch the rope like this, guys. Ropes up. All right. So we're going to make a face loop like on this side. Come on, guys. Everybody have this first loop? So you realize that in this loop, the loose end, it's coming in front. It's in front of me, right? This end, it's in front. All right? So the next loop, we're going to make it reverse like this. So you see? One is at the back, one is at the front. One loop at the back, one at the front. Excellent. We need to get that, guys. Now, this is very important because if we don't get that part, then we cannot tie the, the clove hitch. All right? One at the back, one at the front. And let me see them on different hands like this. All right? Both hands are supposed to have a loop. Excellent. So, guys, you need to ensure that one loop is at the front. And one loop is at the back. So inspect your rope now to ensure that one loop is at the front and one loop is at the back. This is very important. Very, very important, guys. One at the front, one at the back. One at the front, one at the back. All right, so you need to hold your ropes in the loop like this so that we can easily make the knot. All right, so everybody have this part? This is the first stage. We need to get this stage. All right? Because as soon as we get this stage, we are 90% complete. This is the hardest part of the Getting this stage is the hardest part. This will give me real trouble in my Pathfinder days. I can tell you. So I know it's a bit troublesome. All right. So we're going to move to the second stage now. This is the very smooth stage and the very important stage. But we got the hard part. So this is the easy part. This is the very easy part, guys. Look at this. Very easy part. Everybody have it up like this? You need to hold it up like this so that you can easily transition into the second part. So we're going to smoothly take our right hand, all right? Just move it in front of the other one like this, smoothly. Move those guys, move those in front, all right? All right, guys. So what we can do, we can push our hands through these two loops, all right? Push hands through these two loops and tighten it up a bit. Tighten it up a bit. Okay. To ensure that we have it, tighten it up a bit. All right. So it should look something like this. Okay. See that? It should look something like this. All right. So we're going to start again. Remember, guys, we're going to make two loops but they are opposite to each other, all right? One at the front, 
one at the back. Just like this. You see, this one opens this way. This one's open this way. This one open this way. This one open that way. This way, that way. One at the front, one at the back. So we have one at the front, one at the back. Uh, and the important thing is holding your rope at the top of the loop like this so that you can easily transition into the next stage. So hold the rope. It's important how you get to hold the rope, all right? Handling the rope is important, guys. So let's go like this. Opposite sides, right? And then we're going to just bring them together, one in front of the other, like this, all right? I'm holding them like this. Smooth transition, guys. Like this. It should look like this. All right. So get your poles back up, guys. Get those poles back up. Get those poles back up, guys. We're going to make it on a pole. All right. We are going to make it on a pole, guys. Okay. Everybody have the poles? Yes, sir. Poles. Poles. All right. Working end. Get those working end. Let me see those working ends. Working end. Working end, guys. We're going to use that working end to make yes, the entire sir. knot. All right. So get a working end around. All right. This. All right. Everybody got it around the pool like this? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to make another round, but we're going to cross it. All right. So we're going to cross it. We're going to go around again and cross it. All right. We're going to go across it. All right. Like this. Across it. Okay. Everybody went across it like this. And then when you come across, so we're going to go back into itself. Back into itself. Okay, guys. And then you pull. All right. So we're going to try it again. Working end. Working ends up. Working end up. All right. Working end up. Everybody has that? Go around the pole with your working end. All right. Go around the pole. All right. And then we're going to go another round, but this time across. All right. Across. All right. And then we still have a working end. Working end. We go back into itself. Straight in there. Back into itself. Okay. And then we pull both ends. All right. So when we finish, it should look like this. Where one end is coming down and one end is going up. And then you have an end across. You see, when you finish, you're supposed to see two loops like this, two rounds. One, two, one, two. You see, I have two different. All right. You're supposed to have two loops going around the pool like this when you're finished, when you're through. Okay. If you can see two loops, then you may have it. So, working end, we go around the pool with our first loop. Okay, guys. Around the pole, first loop. Everybody have that first stage? That's the first stage, guys. Everybody have it? Yes, sir. First stage, around the pole. Yes, sir. Excellent. Now, we still have our working end. Make sure you still have your working end. Still have your working end. You're going to go across the standing end to make the second loop. Right like this. Let me see who's doing that correctly. All right, working end across the standing end for the second loop. All right, guys. Everybody have the second stage? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes and sir. back into itself, itself. All right, so you're going back into itself right there. Straight back into itself. Back from where you came from, into itself. Okay, guys. Back into itself. Back into itself. Everybody got that? 
to my own so that you can see. You like write this? So you see one is going up, one is going down. All right, so you have it. Working end right. around the pole. Send it over. Take your time. Mm -mm. Get it there? Got it? So like that. Correct. All right, and then you come towards you now, towards you. Bring it towards you. Okay. All right. Bring it towards so you. Like that. And turn it over again. Keep this end down. Keep the other end down. Keep the other end down. The other end in your left hand, keep it down. So you make a like an X across, go across it like this. All right. Keep the this end, keep it down. You work it, the standing end, keep it down, keep it down. Don't bring it up. Okay. All right, so you need to go across like this, and then you need to go back into itself. Like it goes up again, up. It has to go up, back into itself, okay? Don't push it into the other loop, back into itself, okay? All right, so what you can do, um, when we are finished, you can review the video because it's been recorded, so you can practice until you get it, all right? And hopefully, you know, our next session, because you have a lot more notes to do. So our uh, next masterclass, we're going to review this and move on to some more notes, all right? Everybody got it, guys? Remember the notes that we did today? No. The overhand knots, the square knots, the granny, the clove hitch. Yes, sir. Huh? The slip knot. And the slip knot, all right? So we have five knots that we need to practice every day. Take some time. Practice. The class, we should be an expert.